In this example of multi-beam imaging sonar, let's take a look at a Deep Trekker Revolution completing a tunnel inspection. By using multi-beam imaging sonar, we are able to visualize this environment in a much more effective way than we normally would be able to using something such as side scan sonar or a mechanical scanning sonar. Part of this reason is due to the Revolution ROV's unique sonar mount. It is located on the camera head, giving it 270 degrees of movement compared to some ROVs that have a fixed sonar mount. In this example here, you see that we have manipulated the sonar at a negative 90 degree angle in order to make those acoustic waves brush down the front of that wall, revealing the tunnel mouth, almost making it look like we could walk straight into it. It's amazing that by manipulating that angle, we were even able to see a cross section with the sediment and bubbles rising out of the tunnel. Now, let's take a look at the opposite. Let's raise our sonar up to a positive 90 degrees. As we do that, it will reflect off the crown of the tunnel, making that bright edge that you see there. We will also see the bubbles and even our tether as they're on their way up the tunnel shaft to the surface. Since we can use this angle to see exactly how far we are from the start of the tunnel, it's the perfect opportunity to zero out our tether counter so that we can tell exactly how deep we ventured into the horizontal tunnel. Now that we have accurately set our tether counter, we are able to effectively map out anomalies throughout the tunnel inspection, even in zero visibility environments. Now it is time to start our tunnel inspection. What we want to do first is start off with a couple of fast passes. The reason for this, we are going to pick up any large anomalies that might just stick out immediately. Next, we want to do a couple of slower passes to pick up any fine anomalies that might have slipped through the cracks. We see some bubbles here rolling along the crown of the tunnel, and we also see some horizontal seams here in the concrete. We can tell that chances are these are not anomalies due to the fact that they are in such a repetitive pattern. If these were in a spotty, more jagged, crooked pattern, I would be much more concerned about them. However, this is the reason why we do those slower passes later. We're going to go back and double check on them just to make sure there is nothing to worry about. Now, we've taken a look at the crown of the tunnel along with the bubbles, but what happens if we angled the sonar slightly down? We see here a lot of sediment actually sitting on the bottom of the tunnel. As we rotate around, those two vertical lines you see are the edges of the sediment sitting on the bottom, and those little lines protruding out from the sides are actually those seams that we had saw earlier. Now for this example, Let's start by looking at the crown of the tunnel and transition into a negative 90 degree angle. Let's invert our sonar cone so that it matches the way we're pointing the sonar. And now we can see a nice cross section of our tunnel. If we superimpose a circle, we can actually measure and see how much sediment has built up there on the bottom. And if we want to confirm this, it's the perfect opportunity to use Oculus Viewpoints measuring tools to see exactly how much sediment has built up. Transitioning into high frequency mode here, we see a more narrow sonar beam. And as we're scanning the top, we're seeing more of a jagged pattern. So these look a little different than those horizontal perfect seams we saw earlier. These are producing a bit of a shadow behind them, which is telling us that there's some sediment built up. The reason for this is as the water is escaping from those cracks, sediment sticks and builds up to the edges. This concept really helps us see the difference between a natural seam that happens between the concrete sections of pipe coming together and a real crack that needs to be both actioned and reported during your tunnel inspection. We see here the ROV is slowly approaching a target and as we tilt our sonar and manipulate it, we start to see a very, very tall shadow. And this means one thing, this subject is protruding from the crown of the tunnel quite a bit. So to get a better look at what we're seeing, we are now going to tilt the sonar, manipulate it, and also move the ROV back and forth until we can kind of scrape those acoustic waves of the sonar right along the edge of that target. We can now see here, as the circle is coming more into play, it looks to be a vertical pipe protruding from that tunnel crown. We can now take a quick glance at our tether counter and be able to accurately map out exactly where this vertical pipe is within the entire tunnel. For this next example, we are going to take a look at a little bit of a different anomaly. This one, at first glance, seemed a bit rounded and seemed odd. 
At closer look, it turned out to be a large oval crack, which is a type of crack that is common to see in tunnels. By slowly yawing the ROV side to side, we are able to get a better look at this crack. This goes for basically anything with sonar. Always keep manipulating and tilting your sonar in order to get a better feel for your environment. After fully surveying the crack, we saw a little bit of pitting here at the end, so we decided we wanted to zoom in for a closer look. Once your anomaly is clearly in view, it is time to temporarily park your ROV. Now, we want to note how far the anomaly is from the front of the ROV using our range scale on the sonar display. We need to know how far the anomaly is from the ROV so that when the tether manager calls out the distance of tether that has been displaced, we can actually add that extra distance to it in order to overall have the most accurate measurement for where that target lies within the horizontal tunnel. You might be thinking, does this little bit of distance really make that much of a difference? Well, absolutely, especially when working with a zero visibility inspection, accuracy is critical. Let's do an inspection on the vertical shaft that we descended down. As we rotate the ROV around, the mouth of the vertical shaft comes into view. This is similar to our first example where we had the sonar aimed at negative 90 degrees and had the acoustic wave scraping down the wall of the shaft in order to illuminate the horizontal tunnel's mouth. The only difference was the orientation. We're searching the mouth of the tunnel for pitting and spalling due to the fact that this is generally a weak point on this type of structure. As we approach the pitting and spalling, we're going to decrease our range, and now we can even take it one step farther. As mentioned before, we can now load this sonar file or do it in live viewing in the Oculus Viewpoint program. You can see here, we can change color palettes, and we can even measure down to the accuracy of about one centimeter. So in the grand scheme of things, it is an incredibly accurate tool to use for infrastructure inspections.